Okay? What about this one? Do you see the pattern? So, when it's very close, look at two points that are neighbors. Are they similar? Now, increase the distance a little bit. Maybe something like 10 units, 10 cells away. Are they different? Yeah, they have to be at this distance. You cannot fit similarity at this distance. Okay? Now look at this one. Do you see how the correlogram responds? Now, when you are comparing things that are this distance away, you get this positive outcorrelation. Because they are either like this, or sometimes this, very, infrequ very less frequently you are comparing this. But most likely you are comparing things that are similar at this distance. So the correlogram responds. Right? Even more patches. Now the correlogram responds again. You see that? What about the wave? You see the shape of the wave here? You can actually tell how, what's the scale of the wave, or how, it, how large it is. Two waves. Three waves. Waves in the diagonal. <laughs> but that's a, that's a good one. So here are two patches. But they are not perfect, perfectly smooth. So I'm going to increase, decrease smoothness in, for, for each patch, and you're going to watch the correlogram responding to that. You see it changed from this to this, and then to this, and then to this. It's becoming more random. But look, look here. Can you still see a pattern? Can you? Yeah. Now look at the correlogram. It tells you there is a pattern. It's not pretty strong, but there is one. Isn't that a pretty nice tool and a toy? <laughs> Okay? Okay, hands on. Too much talking. Uh, if, if you got the data set from my computer, then by now you have all these files. Okay? Anyone doesn't have the files? You don't. Can you open your computer and get to that address? There's numbers here. Just type them in your browser. Yes. Okay? Uh, 
Is that okay? Should I proceed? If anybody ends up having hardware software problems, we've only got a couple hours. We do want to get at least all of you through this visually at least. So if you've mm -hmm. got hardware software problems, just move over and sit with somebody who's, who seems to be making the progress, okay? Good. All right. So just give me two more minutes. I'm going to show you some tricks in Sam. Then you have time to play uh, with the software yourself. Uh, first, I'm going to open this file over here. It's South Africa Clean. I'm going to open it in Notepad. Here it is. Has only longitude, latitude, and ID. As a proof of concept, I'm going to open it in Excel and I'm going to plot these two. Uh, where is it? Insert this. Here. I only need two variables to show the shape of South Africa. Okay? Uh, Excel can do some uh, not so good maps, maps, but Sam can can do the maps much easier. So, in your computer, you can right-click a file that is uh, has the extension .sam. You can right-click it. If open if Sam is not in the open with, you can just double-click it, and it's going to show what which program you want to open it and then you can say SAM. The other uh, possibility is to open SAM directly from the programs you have installed and, and it's going to open like this. This. Okay, so the program is working. It shows nothing but this gray ugly screen. Now you go to clicking the icon open, main data matrix. Now I'm going to locate the file that you have downloaded. And I'm going to open this South Africa clean. Here it is, same variables have been open. Again, now it's just a matter of making a map. You can go to data graphs and maps and go to map data matrix the variables the the coordinate variables have been selected automatically because they are named longitude and latitude if i click on a third variable a z variable it's going to make a map that's the map of longitude doesn't mean anything but it is a map that's the map of latitude. And that's the map of ID. Still doesn't mean much, but that's just a proof of concept. In SAM, you can right click any graph and you get lots of options. And I'm going too fast? No? If you right click, I'm sorry? Too fast? So why don't you just, uh, are you just watching or uh, trying to do something? No, no, don't write, just watch. It will come back to you when you start doing it. Because I'm just showing uh, steps, it's no, there's no concept behind. Uh, so if you right click a map and show and, and click show countries, map boundaries, show countries. Here it is. That's South, Amer South Africa. Right here. Okay? Pretty easy, pretty fast, one click. Okay? Uh, with the help of my friend Rafael, I have also prepared uh, this other file that says 
uh, South Africa full. It has lots of variables inside. So not only latitude, longitude, but additional variables. I can go back to mapping or click this icon over here. And now I'm mapping species richness of mammals or any variable here, right? These are uh, precipitation, this is altitude, this is precipitation, this is temperature, and so on. Those, those variables are all available to you and I have processed them uh, earlier. I'm gonna highlight later how I did it, how, how I did it. Okay? Good. Uh, and finally, Town has kindly processed the map of uh, richness of birds in <laughs> in Madagascar. Let me get here. Uh, for those that downloaded uh, the data early in the morning, there is more data over there for you in the server, and it's called Med Avis. Oh, should be Med Birds, but oh, Med Avian. <coughs> Angry Birds, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> So the point, the point of this is this example. Yeah. Remember what we were doing with the doll with mapping We had all those questions about data cleaning and things like that. But at the very end, we had that nice shape file with grid squares, and each grid square with a number of species. Okay? Well, if you want to look at the distribution of species richness over space, the only difference, the only thing I did to change this, the file, to get to the files that, that, that are right up there, mm -hmm. was that I calculated the centroid of the grid square. And that was just the average of the maximum and the minimum of latitude and the maximum and the minimum of the longitude. So I just created two new fields in the table. It took me 20 seconds. Um, but the point is, this is literally feeding right out of what Adolfo did in ArcView and what I did in QGIS. And right from there, you go into here. And so Tiago's mm -hmm. got a few images that will remind you of what we did. These are the original points? About 15,000 observations in the data set. Mm -hmm. And then distilled down to 6,000 unique uh, locality species combinations. Then overlay a grid. Third of a degree in size. Mm -hmm. and, and then those are your richness values. They go from low at blue to high at red. Okay. And all I did was calculate the centroid of each of those squares. Now, uh, this very same data is this one. Just ID of each cell, longitude, latitude, and the number of recorded bird species in each, in each cell. I can open this with Excel, and I... Uh, I can open this in Excel. <laughs> of course I can. <laughs> of course I can. Uh, I could open this in any software uh, and keep adding or remove cells from here and it, it's unlimited. Like I can have as many cells as I want. It could be uh, sparse in space. Uh, it could be regularly designed. Uh, but in any way, I can open this in SAM. Here it is, ID, longitude, latitude, and bird richness. And a map of this would look like this. Okay? Uh, why is it not squared like the grid? Well, 
Turns out that there are some gaps inside, and Sam has troubles to understand if it's a regular grid or not. But you can just right click here and do map symbol square. There you go. Now that they are squared, but they are still overlapping a little. Then you can do right click, de uh, decrease cell size until it fits. Okay. Now, what about some boundaries? Show countries. There you go. Okay. There it is. But, so I, I highly recommend you, highly recommend you to first thing, open your data set and do a map. Map it. Look at the pattern. See, we want to know why uh, there are outliers, uh, how the, the pattern is uh, related with space, how, how it's distributed in space. Those are uh, ecological questions, interesting ecological questions. And it always starts by looking at the map, the exploratory data analysis. It always starts with that, okay? So there's no analysis of data in which you don't look at how, it, uh, how it's spatially distributed. Uh, once you have done that carefully, like zooming in, zooming out, uh, thinking on what it means, thinking on where here you have been, uh, what are the richness you would expect in different places, then once you are done doing that, then you can go to Structure, Moran's Eye, and Corellogram, which is where we want to be today. Which variable do we want to, to study the spatial autocorrelation? Bird richness. And as a standard, as, as default, it has suggested that there should be 14 distance classes. You could come here and change it to more or less. And as default as well, it has suggested that you should have equal number of pairs per distance class. What are these distance classes? You click here and click here. From third from 33 to 132 kilometers. That's the first distance class. From 132 to 215, that's the second distance class, and so on. Once you are uh, okay with these settings, you just click Compute. And that's the pattern, that's the autocorrelation for the uh, uh, richness of uh, birds in Madagascar. Okay? Let's do that for the mammals. Pretty quick. Because you have to do it. Uh, map first. Okay, map. Now, correlogram. Memo richness. Compute. That's the level of uh, spatial correlation in this map. Okay? Couple clicks. Now it's with you. Okay? You have to answer. Uh, where are these questions? You have to answer these questions. It's a good thing. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, I got I got the translation now. Thank you. 